All right. We're busy with this series called Born for This, and I believe that each one of us here this morning is uh, born for a time such as this. You're born for today, and uh, God has a super awesome plan with you, and He wanted you to be here today. Um, those of you who are listening online, maybe watching the video, maybe this is a bit later in the week, maybe you're sitting 2020 now, going back on our YouTube channel, um, you're listening to this, God wants you to hear this today. Amen? Amen. All right. So we're going to speak that today. I'm going to talk about, a, um, I call this a sermon or talk, whatever you want to call it, uh, the problem called for praise. And um, praise starts before you even open your mouth. We'll look at it, a problem called for praise. Have you guys ever called anyone when you're in trouble? Like, who do you call? Ghostbusters, right? <laughs> no, not like that. Um, you know, sometimes you have a problem, um, maybe a pipe in your house bursts, um, and there's water, lo water all over your house. Who do you call? Lawrence, obviously. He's the only guy that can fix that in Canada. Um, yeah, please call him when that happens. Um, no, but when you have a problem, you want to call on something because you want help, right? And um, this morning we're going to talk about the problem, um, the problem called for praise. And um, we're going to look at how praise uh, can be a problem for your problem. And um, <laughs> yes, someone gets it. Someone, someone's excited. Uh, only one person. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you in this. Okay. Now this morning. All right. So have you ever bought something super powerful? Or have you ever had something super powerful in your hands? Maybe like... Uh, uh, we uh, demoed a house down the street um, last year a while ago and I was with the Penner boys busy doing that and, um, uh, and it was Andreas' house and <laughs> there was a jackhammer this one who knows a jackhammer is pretty powerful like it's a heavy machine you can do pretty cool things to it only to concrete though don't try and put it on your car or on your tiles or anywhere else um, super powerful machine and um I've never used the jackhammer. I know I'm from South Africa, um, but not everyone uses jackhammers everywhere. And um, so I didn't really know how to use it or how to angle it and everything. And um, super powerful machine. We had to um, get all these concrete blocks out and everything. And I picked it up, and I remember the penners doing it, so I kind of watched them do it. And um, Andreas went out, and I'm like, okay, I have to give this a shot. I've never done this, so. And I, I see the guy, I just always shaking, you know. It looks pretty fun, and maybe you'll get some toned. I don't know. I don't have abs, so I don't know what will get toned. Maybe something, my neck. Um, <laughs> and um, I tried it, but nothing really happened. Like, the thing just went up and down. And I'm like pressing, and I don't know why I'm not getting through to the concrete. Like, it's not cracking like it did when the penners did it. And... Um, they came and showed me that uh, you actually like have to angle it and wiggle it and uh, stuff like that. So I had this super powerful tool in my hand, but I had no idea how to use it, right? Um, one day in South Africa, I just started going to church and I um, played guitar in uh, the Sunday services. And still to this day, this is a really funny, embarrassing story because it's the first Sunday where I had like a super... Uh, important role to play that morning with the acoustic. I had to start a song, you know, play an intro on the acoustic. And we had practice before the service, and uh, after that we go downstairs and we go pray and prepare. You know, you have to pray always. And um, we come back on, and I'm so stoked. I'm so excited. I'm just gonna jump on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna nail this thing, right? Like this is gonna be me. No, God, this is just going to be me. People are going to look at me. I'm going to strum this thing. And um, we start, look at the drummer. And the drummer's like, one, two, three, four. And I'm like strumming away. And I don't hear anything. And I'm like, what's wrong? Like, I don't have any monitors, nothing. So I show the, the sound engineer at the back, like, put me up. You know, while strumming, they, he thinks I'm flipping him off, and <laughs> the people. And I'm like strumming, strumming, and nothing comes out. And I'm like, turn the volume off on my guitar, and nothing happens. And um, I'm like, okay, I can deal with this. It's fine. I can play with no monitors. I don't know that it's not out, um, on outside. And um, I play the whole service like that with no acoustic in my monitors. And um, we're done. We had a great service. And I turn around, I put the acoustic down, and I'm like, Oh, that cable should have been in my guitar. <laughs> like, I'm like, okay, there's your problem, you know. There's, 
uh, the issue always comes from some roots, and that was my root right there, the little cable that was there. I never plugged in my acoustic, rookie mistake, stupid. I thought I was a rock star, strumming away, but um, yeah, that just didn't happen that morning. So sometimes you have this powerful instrument um, or this powerful tool in your hands and you don't know how to use it, right? And it's kind of meaningless if you don't know how to use it. So when you look at the problem, um, if we look at uh, this morning, the topic we're talking on, on praise, um, I want you guys to realize that it's important to know that you're allowed to praise. It's important to know how you can praise. Like, there's not really, like, a method or anything like that or a certain way you should praise, you know. Um, we just sang a couple of songs this morning in church, and that's one way we praise um, in the morning with some songs, but that's not the ultimate way um, that we praise. It's not the fast songs that we sing in church, you know, the ones where you can do a little bounce like a bunny, you know, it's super fun, you just like, it's like you're in a club or something, I don't know, you know, those are not, that's not praise, that's not the only way of praise, that's a form of praise, but um, we're going to look at something super profound this morning, um, I believe that, I believe it because we're going to look at a book uh, in the Bible, uh, we're going to look at uh, Acts uh, this morning about two guys, and Andreas has been talking about uh, this one guy a little bit in this past couple of weeks. Um, we all heard about the guy Paul in the Bible, and a super cool dude, you know, he once was against Christianity, and then uh, he kind of turned for Christianity, which was nice because he uh, planted a lot of churches, and he just loved God so much, and um, I'll just jump right uh, into that for now. So let's just read first together um, Acts 16 uh, verse 25 along about midnight Paul and Silas were at prayer and singing a hymn to God I only left out that word because I don't know how to pronounce it uh, <laughs> by the way English is my second language so if you don't understand something it might be my accent it also might be because I don't know the words <laughs> one of those you choose um, the other prisoners couldn't believe their ears. Then without warning, a huge earthquake um, came. The jailhouse tottered like it, um, it, fell, it fell down and every door flew open. All the prisoners were loose. Next slide. Um, startled from sleep, the jailer saw all the doors swinging loose on their hinges, assuming that all the prisoners had escaped. He pulled out his sword and was about to do himself in. I'm figuring that he was as good as dead anyways. When Paul stopped him and Paul said, don't do that, we're all still here. Um, nobody has run away. The jailer got a torch and ran inside. Uh, badly shaken, he collapsed in front of Paul and Silas and he led them out of the jail and asked, sirs, what do I have to do to be saved, to really live? And uh, Paul replied, or both of them replied and said, put your entire trust in Jesus. Then you will live as you were meant to live, and everyone in your household included. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, they went on to spell out in the detail the story of Christ. Um, the entire family got in on this part. They never, they never did get to bed that night. Um, the jailer made them feel at home. He dressed their wounds, and then he couldn't wait till the morning. He was baptized and so was everyone in his family. It's great to have something powerful, all right? Paul had something powerful um, with him while they were in jail. Like, it was very obscure, like, what happened when they were thrown in jail. But, I mean, this is, like, a pretty crazy story, right? Like, there, there's some stories in the Bible that's, like, really super crazy. And, like, it's really awesome to read because it's not, it's not a boring book. Okay, it's really not a boring book. Um, but Paul and Silas, let's go to the first. Let's go to the, to the first part. And um, I'm going to just highlight a couple of things for you uh, this morning, and we'll talk about that. Let's look at the first line there. Like it starts off, Along about midnight, Paul and Silas were at prayer and singing a hymn to God. Um, midnight. Why, why is that important? Like, man, in the darkest times of the night, our praise should be the loudest. You guys agree? Like, when it really, when the going gets tough, like, that's when your praise um, should be the loudest, 
okay? That's when you're calling to God, like when you want to hold on to God. That's when the people around you want to see. They say that the, the prisoners were listening in on this. So they were singing. You know, some people thought, um, still believe, some historians believe that uh, they were singing some songs from Chris Tomlin, How Great Is Our God, <laughs> you know? Something like, I truly believe they sang Man in the Mirror from Michael Jackson. Come on, oh, you know? One of those, really good. I love him, but man, that's so good. About midnight, Paul and Silas were at prayer and singing a hymn to God, and the other prisoners couldn't believe their ears. They were listening in. Do you guys know that people outside the church uh, want to hear what we do as Christians? Because let's be honest, the, um, everyone in the world has a view about something, right? They have their own opinion about something, and um, Christianity is a big thing. Everyone kind of knows about it in the world but um, a lot of people um, look at it in a bad way in a bad light and um, some of them what would happen if we show them how we deal with bad times what would happen if we show them uh, what to do when you're thrown in prison you know are you gonna sit and mope in the corner like just sit there on your own um, waiting for nothing to happen or do you guys think, I'll, I'll just put that out there, do you guys think we should kind of do what Paul and Silas did and um, just started lifting up your spirit, lifting up something, and they did it, they lifted up their spirits to God and they sang, they sang a song to God, a hymn. And <laughs> the other prisoners were listening because they're curious and they want to hear. Guys, the people outside in the world here in Ladner, they want to see what you do. All right, and when we talk about praise this morning, um, I'll show you uh, just a couple of thoughts, and we're going to go through and how praise is not just songs on Sunday mornings that we do. You can praise God at night time. You can praise Him in the morning. You can praise Him literally in everything you do, and we're going to look at why why that's possible. Um, let's go to the um, wait before sorry before you go to the next one. <laughs> So we got two guys, okay? First of all, before I forget, this is really cool. We got two guys, Paul and Silas, um, sitting there. Uh, two good guys doing the right thing, okay? They found themselves in the wrong position. That's why they were thrown in jail, okay? You can go and go read the whole, read the whole chapter. But um, it's two guys doing the right thing in the wrong spot, in the wrong area, on the wrong position. Um, anyone ever been there? Like you felt like you've, done like you're doing right but you find yourself in the wrong place right like that happens that happens but that's what they did so they were thrown in jail and they sang so Paul and Silas now I'm not good at math but I know that one is like an individual and one plus one is two and like two is a group right Am I, yeah okay great you guys are smart <laughs> so smart I say that because no one answered Okay, one plus one is two. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so two is a group. So when they come, we read in the scripture that where two or more gather, there he is, right? And here's Paul and Silas in the prison. They're praising God and singing hymns and um, clapping, whatever they did. Um, and the prisoners listen. And the next thing you know, boom, boom, earthquake. That was my sound effects of an earthquake happening. And the jailhouse came down. All right, the doors flew open, all the gates were open, like, you know, no walls. No walls. Can you guys see? I hope you're seeing where I'm going with this. Do you guys know that when we gather here this morning, like here, like in every single church around the country this morning on Sunday evenings, we all come together and we sing songs, okay? Do you think that Paul expected an earthquake to happen that night? No, they were just singing to God because that's just what they do. That's just what they did. They didn't expect God to do something like ridiculously cool and break down the whole jail and it's just looks like a cool movie Garnet made or something. You know, it's they didn't expect that. God just showed up because he always gives us more than what we ask for, right? We sang that this morning in all of our songs like man, all those songs we sang this morning we're so meaningful, and if you really take those words and you sing it with meaning, man, that'll change your life. That'll really, 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 really change your life. <laughs> man, an earthquake came, the jailhouse started, every door flew open, all the prisoners were loose. The next slide. Um, 
Startled from sleep, the jailers saw all the doors swinging loose on their hinges. Assuming that all the prisoners had escaped, he pulled out his sword and was about to do himself in. Because he figured he was dead, right? Like, everyone escaped. He's, he's the guy for the job. You know, what, what will happen if you don't do your job? You get fired, okay? Now, back in the day, they didn't get a letter. They didn't call you in um, into the office. And, hey, why did all the prisoners escape? Please, leave for six months and don't come back, you know? They didn't do that. This guy knew that they were going to kill him because he let all the prisoners out. He was supposed to guard them, you know? But what happened? They praised God. They sang a song to him, all right? That was their method that night. They sang a hymn to him. Hymns are powerful, I'm not going to lie. I might be a younger guy, but man, hymns are good. Hymns are good because they're true, worshipful uh, poetry that was written to God. And it just comes like inspired by God because it's people standing in the awe of God and um, just realizing who He is. And they wrote that thing. And I believe that hymns are super powerful. And, but... Um, Get me right, if I'm talking about hymns, I'm talking about any song, because any song is kind of poetry, in a way, just put to a melody, you know? It's, um, <laughs> they didn't expect this. Um, this guy pulled out his sword, was about to kill himself, and Paul shouted, stop, don't do it. Now, who on earth would stop a guy that just threw you in jail? who just did you wrong on that super big business deal that you had to do, and he cheated you, who on earth would go and say, stop, don't do that? Man, Paul must have had something. He must have had something in him. Like, that's a, that's, that's a good kind of love for your enemy. Yeah. That jailer right there is Paul's enemy at that moment. He's the guy that, you know, puts him in jail, keeps him there, keeps him in jail. You guys have people that keep you in jail, like wherever, like whatever it is in your life, like people who have wronged you or anything. Like what Paul did here, man, is super profound. Like he must have had a relationship with God, or had the Spirit of Jesus upon him, or listened to Numa podcasts or something. I don't know. He had something, something really profound because. This is what happens when you offer everything to God, when you praise God with everything you have in the midst of the darkest times, in the midst of the midnight time, the darkest hour of the night. When you praise God, walls will come crashing down. First of all, chains will be broken. Walls will keep, come ca crashing down as we see in the scripture. Next thing, you'll start loving your enemies. Okay, without you even knowing it, when you guys praise this morning and when we sing songs, when you walk on the streets with a, with a mindset of praise and just loving God, God is going to give you a love to love your enemies. I don't know about you, but I believe that's the way the world will change. Amen? amen. By the way, you guys are allowed to say amen or hallelujah. I'm from Africa. Yeah. Okay. Let's leave it there. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you know the problem called for praise praise can be a problem for your problem Paul and Silas's problem was being in jail being locked up being imprisoned by things um, we have that same we have the same thing happening uh, to this day to us um, we're stuck in addiction we have self esteem issues um, we don't know how to love people we don't want to love people um, we cheat in business uh, we cheat on our spouses. We, we cheat in relationships. We have all these things that are bad things, right? Like it's, uh, it's things that, that bound you to something. Um, but we have something that can so not solve that, but we have something that defeats that, right? That's praise. That's why every problem that you have is calling for praise because, man, if you mess with us, you're going to get smashed like you know your problem is n doesn't stand a chance to what God has for you your problem doesn't match up to what God can do in your life amen God is way too powerful for anything that we struggle with 
like any problem we have. God is way bigger than that. So praise is going to become a problem for your problem. If you start doing it, and if you start using it the right way, you know. We can talk about these things in church uh, every week. We can uh, teach you guys uh, things that God shows us. Um, but if you don't go home and you take it to heart and you apply it in your everyday life, it's not going to mean anything. Because, listen, you're not created for yourself, okay? I know this might be hard for some of you to hear, but you're not created for yourself. You're created for that person next to you. Look at that person next to you and tell them, I love you, you're great, you're going to have a great week. It's going to be good. Now look at the other person, tell them, you were my second chance, and I'm sorry. You were my second choice, and I'm sorry, but I still love you. I still love you. <laughs> yeah, choose wisely. Choose wisely. <laughs> That's always a tricky one. Uh, guys, we were born for this now today. We were born for that person right next to you. We were born for the people here in Ladner. All right? You were born for the people in Langley, Surrey, uh, Richmond, Swanson, wherever you come from in the city, uh, if you're watching online, if you're in Barcelona, um, wherever, maybe you're in Chile or in Uganda, or you were born to be there, okay? But you're born for other people, not for yourself. That's why it's important for us to start praising God in the midst of the darkness so that the prison walls can fall down. What happened? Everyone in there became free. All right? We have to realize that all the prisoners in there, they didn't just run away, but all the walls were broken down. When they came together to, um, when Paul and Silas came together, they praised God. That's what we do as a church. We praise and walls come crashing down. And it's not for the sake of us. Yes, it's good to get our bodies in line with God. Like, God, I praise you. This is us doing it for the person next to you. Maybe you're coming to church one morning and you don't feel like going to church. Anyone ever felt like that? I don't want to wake up this morning. I want to have my coffee in bed. I'm going to sleep till 11.30 because I don't, I don't really feel like going to church. I just don't feel it. Anyone ever felt that way? I know I have. I have. I see a lot of hands. That's nice. Talking to the right crowd here. I'll be super honest with you guys and I'm going to be real... I, I'm going to be authentic, like, I'm just going to be who I am and just tell you guys that it's not always easy to come to church happy and full of, you know, feeling it, always. <laughs> but I'm sorry to say that it's not about your feeling, okay? Since when did Christianity become about your feelings, how you feel, you know? Whether you're happy or you're sad or you don't feel like it, Maybe we sang some songs this morning and that song is just, wet, like Nick is just killing it on the drums. And you're like, stop smacking the drums, boy. You know? <laughs> Maybe you're just not feeling it. Maybe we sang some songs that's too high for you to reach and you're like, oh, pray. Oh, I can't reach that. God, I'm not going to praise you. I'm going to sit there. You know? Praising God is not about our feelings because I bet that Paul and Silas, that's not a good feeling to be in a prison, Okay? But they raised up a hymn to God, and great things happened. Walls came crashing down. The jailer had a question. That's when we move on. This is, how, this is what happens when we praise in church and do this thing on Sunday mornings, but then we go out. And what happens is the people see how we live. The people see how we deal with these bad things in our lives, with addiction, how we overcome addiction, how we praise God in those bad moments. And what do they do? They have questions. They have questions. Can we go to the next slide? The jailer got a torch and he ran inside, badly shaken, and he collapsed in front of Paul and Silas with a question. He let them out of the jail and asked, Sirs, what do I have to do to be saved? And this is important. He adds this, to really live. That's good. That's good. I'll just tell you now that uh, God brought me out of some really like, I was a bit of a rebel, like not the worst life ever, but you know, I did bad things and some things my parents don't know of. And I think they're going to listen to this message sometime and I'm probably going to get a phone call. It's like, what did you do? You know, I don't know, but 
I was in a time where I didn't have God in my life. And um, I met Jesus a couple of years ago, and my life transformed. Um, some of us sometimes have these questions, like, like this guy had. Like, what do I do? What do I, have to, what do I have to do to be saved, to really live? I can tell you now that I didn't live before I met God. Yes, I had a good time. Like, I had a good, I had a good life. Um, great parents, great family. I had a good life, but there's still something missing. It's definitely still something missing until Jesus shows up to the scene. I'll just tell you out of my experience, and um, one day I'll share my testimony with you guys, but man, this is so good. He asked, and what did they reply? With a 10-step program? Did they tell him, confess all your sins and you shall be saved? Repeat, like say out all 100,000 sins you have and you shall be saved. Did he say, you got a tithe, man? Then you'll really live? No. They replied with a simple response saying, you need Jesus, you know. Put your trust in Jesus Christ. And for some of us, um, we have no clue what that means. Maybe it's the first time you hear the word Jesus, or it's the first time you ever hear the word Christ. And, you know, those are big words, and it's powerful words for us. But um, what Paul and Silas did after that, they, um, they went on, and it says that they, they talked to him, and they showed him, and told him everything about God about Jesus. They shared with him the gospel. Okay? I've had people in my life where they ask me, um, you know, they have questions about God and faith and who Jesus is and stuff. And uh, sometimes, like, I'll be honest, like, there's a lot of times where I didn't have the answer because I wasn't feeling it. (laughs) I didn't feel like talking to this guy. I want to sit and enjoy my food. I just want to buy my groceries just want to get out of this place. I don't want to talk to him now about Jesus. That was me then, because I had really nothing to say. Although I knew about it, all right, but now I come to a place where God has changed my life, and I decided to let God into every aspect of my life. I'm going to praise God in every, like, every single thing in my life. I chose to start praising God in it, and um, God started giving me um, like I received the spirit right like we have God's spirit and that gave me the answer and it's never anything intellectual because if it was trust me I will not be standing here okay I barely made high school um, <laughs> no I'm kidding I'm a smart kid <laughs> John stop laughing seriously <laughs> man this guy you never know with friends, you know. Are they your friends or are they your... Ed- I, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I love you. I love you. Um, you know what? It's not about the smart things you can say or all the Hebrew words, you know, or what you can say, like this scripture means all of that and that and that. It's as simple as, dude, just got to trust Jesus. Can I tell you who Jesus is? Like, that's what happens outside of church, Okay. That's not, what should, that's not what's supposed to be happening in church every week. We can come up here and uh, feed everyone who's already been fed. You know? It's, uh, we can keep preaching the same thing and have everyone in the same mentality, on the same topic, everything, for a hundred years. Do you guys think that your town will be changed if everyone got the same message every week and no one went out to, did it, to do anything? No. That's why we preach on these things that God shows us. That's why we preach on how gracious He is about how just good and evident His grace is in our lives. And we were born for this. All these great series that we've done here at Numa. And I believe that all the churches here in Latin preach the truth and preach Jesus. All right? But it will never be the same thing. There's always something different you can take home. So maybe you've heard this a couple of times in your life. Maybe it's the first time. I want to ask all of you, just re-hear this I don't even know if that's a word but you know relearn this what we're talking about today praise is powerful man and it'll change your life okay 
they went on to spell out in detail the story of Christ to him. <laughs> this is really cool. The entire family got in on this. Uh, they never did get to bed that night. The jailer made them feel at home, dressed their wounds, and then he couldn't wait till the morning. He was baptized, and so was his whole family. First of all, here's this enemy from Paul, and here's the guy who starts to clean his wounds. All right? This is good. This is good because when you start praising God in the midst of the darkness, when you praise Him, your enemies, you won't only just love them, but your enemies will make a full circle and come back and God will bless you through them. Have you guys, has anyone ever experienced that in their life? By starting to love your enemies, man, they come back and they love you because they receive God. They, they get a sense of who God is. That's when it happens. They'll make a full circle, man, and they'll come and wash your wounds. They'll come and clean you up. They'll make you feel at home. You know how special that is? Like to be friends with someone you've been enemies with for a long time? That's super powerful. And I know it's hard to only have friends in your life. Um, it's really hard, but you got to love those enemies, man. we got to do it. And it's, only, it's so much easier when you're in a mindset of praise. All right? We'll get to that now. But first, um, this was kind of a cool party. I'm just saying that's the kind of party I think I like to throw is uh, tell someone about God, their whole family wants to get baptized, you know, in the bathtub. And um, you just fill it up and um, dunk one little kid, dunk the second kid, you know. No, you do the whole thing. But um, that's what happened with his family. Like one night, they didn't even, they didn't wait for the conference to come in January 16 in October or you know they didn't put on their calendar I am gonna get baptized on June 24th they didn't wait for that Paul didn't say dude I'm sorry I'm busy I have a lunch to go to no this guy said I'll give you food man I'll make you feel at home but man I need to know what you have I need to know what you have people want to know the world wants to know what we have all right why? Because it's different. And if it's not different than what the world has, I want you to listen this morning. All right? There's a key thing here this morning that we can learn about the power of God, the power of praise. Um, praise. Talk about the word praise. It's totally not the songs we sing on Sunday mornings. Do you guys agree? Okay? We've gone through that. This, okay? We're done. Everyone understands that. Okay, great. Praise is more of a mindset, okay? It's a state of mind. It's a way of life, okay? So by that, I mean it's good to sing songs. It's one method. You can do it. But another one is that uh, just by... That thing cracks. It's the one Andreas built, <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> no, <I'm, laughs> I don't want to fall through. No, I won't. Um, Praise, praise is a way of life, you know. It's, um, for us as Christians, it's, it's a powerful tool that we have that we can use, you know. You just got to plug it in. Make sure that the plug is in. Make sure your cable is plugged. Because we're allowed to use this, guys. We're allowed to praise God. But it's a way of thinking. It's a way of life. And um, it's living in victory. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Is that praise is... A way of life, a state of mind of living in victory doesn't mean that everything's always going to be nice, moonshine and roses, all right? It's never, never, yeah, I think it's South African, I don't know. No, moonshine's something you drink, it's not that, no. Is this water? <laughs> you never know. No, I'm kidding, it's water. Um. <laughs> it's sunshine and roses yeah I like it it's never no one said ever that it's going to be easy okay Paul is a great example of um, serving God and following God um, how it's not always easy but it's easy if you have Christ in your mind it's easy it's easy if you live with Christ it's easy if you open up your heart to God then those moments when the hard times come um, you know what to do because, man, I have this God with me 
who we read in this word is the creator of all. Okay? He's the, he's the source of life. He's, he's the giver of love. He's, uh, he's the main guy that gives out grace, you know. Uh, he's the creator of everything all around you, okay? It's a state of mind, and you've got to realize that praise is just you realizing how good he is, all right? Not the state that I'm in, not the kind of feeling, man, I feel tired this morning not that it's realizing that God is good okay we're gonna look at a couple of things like praise is acknowledging that God is good that's why we praise we praise because God has already been good all right way back in the day way back way back before David Evanson was born way back man God has been good always always and he's there and he's done all these great things and that's what we hang our praise on like that's why we praise because he's been good and he will always be good if you have a self-esteem issue and you struggle to look into that mirror you guys remember the mirror that we had um, if you struggle to look into the mirror and see a good loving beautiful person start praising God for who he is and who he is in you and you will see that beautiful person in the mirror if you struggle with an addiction, start praising God for the grace that is given way back and the, kind of the change that has been broken in the stories that we read in the Bible, all these things. Just look at some things that God has been gracious in your life before. If you struggle with that, start praising Him for who He is and what He has already done. And that will become a problem for your addiction. And your addiction won't stand a chance. I'm telling you now, it won't stand a chance. <laughs> Man, I love this because this is really a message dear to my heart. Praise is a, is a thing that I, I do love um, to do. Like physically, I raise my hands and stuff. Um, I do love that. You guys might have seen this morning in church, some people, um, when we praise, we worship God with our hands in the air. And um, it's an outward expression, right? What does it do? Um, this is not the only method of praise. Um, and when we go, like when you, walk in, when you walk into an alley anywhere in the world and someone puts a gun to your back, what do you do? Like what's your first reaction you do? Depends on where you were trained, you know, Air Forces or what. <laughs> Ken pulls a gun out. I don't know. <laughs> Son, you know. No. <clears throat> first thing you surrender, right? What's the international sign of surrender? You put your hands up, you know. Yeah. And that's kind of why we do it, because that's just us telling our body, God is good. God is great. Man, God, you are good, and I believe in your grace. I believe in you. I believe that, mm, God, Jesus, I, I know who I am in you. That's why I can look in this mirror, God, and see that I am beautiful, that I'm a great, great creation by him right that's why we lift our hands in church if any one of you uh, were wondering um, it's just the way it's not the only way okay uh, it's good you got to realize praise is God being good and we saying God you are good in this like I don't know what your future holds okay I don't know what's gonna happen when you walk out of this building today or in the week I don't know what's coming but what if something good comes this week? Are you going to praise God? Yeah, probably. What if something bad happens? Are you going to praise God? Yeah. Maybe. Some of us do. But it's harder. It's harder. Trust me. A couple of years ago, this is where your feelings come in, come, comes in place. Um, when you don't feel good, you have to decide to, to uh, tell yourself, tell your body, I'm going to praise God. No, many times I'll feel, I'll feel crappy, man. And I will force myself, like I love just in my house, just me. It's just me. Like I love putting up my hands and just singing in my house or whatever and praising God. And especially in times when I don't feel well. And uh, a couple of years ago, uh, this is where it all really turned in my life about praise. Uh, this is why it's, it's really a message dear to my heart. Um, about four, four years ago, 
uh, I lost my brother in South Africa, and uh, I was on the Friday, Friday evening, we got a phone call, and um, I lost my brother on the Friday night, and um, the next week, the Wednesday, um, I had to preach at a high school out in South Africa, um, school over Ukraine. And um, I don't know about you, maybe you've lost a family member or something. It sucks, okay? I'll be, I'll be real with you. It, um, it's very emotional. Like, I had this feeling where I didn't really want to praise God, right? I, I was in this place where I'm like, God, I don't really want to praise you. Like, I don't feel it. I, I just, ah, God, I don't want to. So on a Tuesday evening, I get the call um, from the school, and they're like, Bish, are you still uh, good to uh, preach tomorrow morning? And, um, man, I wanted to say no <laughs> so bad. And um, they didn't know what happened. Uh, they didn't know. They were just checking if I was still good to go. And um, I said yes. And um, I was wrestling a little bit with God in that time. But um, still I chose to, to go because I knew that God will carry me through this. Even though I don't feel good, I feel crappy. Like, I feel emotional. I'm probably going to cry and stuff there while I'm there. But I'm going to choose to do it. So Wednesday morning comes. I go to the school. And I'm standing there in South Africa at the schools. Uh, every week they, had, they have the gathering where it's all announcements of the week and all of that. And um, South Africa is a pretty Christian country. And the schools there, um, they're allowed to have Christianity and stuff in school. So they would get people to come and preach now and then and just deliver a, a sermon or a message. Um, so they asked me, and I was standing there in the back, and there's like 1,500 kids in the high school. Uh, it's really big high schools, and I'm standing there, and I'm like, I don't know if I should have said yes, because I'm not, I'm, I'm not feeling this. I'm not feeling this. And um, they call my name up, and uh, they say, we just want to welcome Hendrik Bischoff. That's my real name. And... Um, I, when they said that on my way to the front, I had to convince my body. And I remember saying, just, just in my spirit, just saying, I didn't raise my hands that time. I didn't do anything weird, nothing. I just said in my spirit, God, I praise you for who you are because I know you're the only one that can speak through me now. I cannot do this on my own. I don't even know if I can say your name without you empowering me, without your Holy Spirit with me. So uh, I get to the front, and I stand there, look at all the kids, and um, I'm like, okay, here we go, and I started preaching. I started preaching. Words came f flowing out of my mouth, and I just, man, I don't know how, because seriously, I did not feel it. But so, like, such great things happened. The kids were laughing. I remember I was down on the ground doing like a kind of dance on the ground, and <sighs> that's not typical for someone who just lost a family member, all right? You don't, like, I don't, like, I wouldn't usually do it, like, I don't know about you, but, man, in those times, my praise become the thing that pushed me because I was relying on who he was and not on my feelings. Because if you do that, you're going to trust, you're going to feel different every day, okay? For the rest of your life, you're going to feel different every day, okay? Now, who would you rather hold on to? Yourself that's going to feel different every day or to a God that never changes and is everlasting. Okay? It's the question. You can rhetorical answer yourself. Okay? Who are you going to hold on to? Got to move your feelings aside and decide that praise, uh, this way of thinking, of standing in victory already will dictate your life and not praise. Sometimes you have to push yourself to do it. Trust me. It's hard, man. You've got to push hard. You've got to push hard sometimes. But it's going to happen. And once you do it, what's going to happen? Those walls are going to come crashing down. People will get saved. People will start questioning, have questions about God. All these good things. These are really good things. And I love, you know. Anyone ever been um, like to a sports game? Yeah, a live sports game? Most of you here in Canada, you know, hockey, football. You guys love it. You guys love it. I love it too now. I don't understand football that much. But um, <laughs> it's really good. So sometimes we as Christians get this wrong a little bit. Because we'll go to a hockey game or to a football game. And what do you see? Thousands of people cheering. Cheering on. 
waving their hands. There's Mexican waves going everywhere. That's what they call that thing that goes around, right? And people shouting. When your team scores, what do you do? You shout. You scream. You go, yeah! What if the other team scores? What do you do? You boo. <laughs> you have this really bad look to the person next to you. <laughs> You're like, ah, my team's going to win. You know? That's great. That's great. We do that. But then we come to church. <laughs> and we know, we, you know, there's a God. We preach this. It's one God sent His one and only Son to die for us on the cross. He was beaten. He was crucified on the cross. Took the whole weight of the world on His shoulders. He rose again. And now He's with us. For me, that's good news. It's great news, all right? Question, do you find yourself sometimes cheering on the television or a sports team? Because it's easy. There's other people doing it. And then come to church and you don't even want to at least try and lift your hands, right? It's hard sometimes and maybe it's not the way. That's not the only way. Like people, if you can sit in your chair and worship God and praise Him from there, great. God bless you. Um, but sometimes you have to force your body to just, even if it's just this, you know, we call this holding the TV, you know, you know, carrying the TV. Even if it's just that, God, I praise you. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. I praise you. Even if it's just that, a seed is planted. A praise seed is planted. We've been talking about planting seeds here. That's all we need. That's all we need. Maybe it's a big hymn. Maybe it's a cool song. Maybe it's just a little movement from you saying, God, I surrender. This is me. I surrender. You know what? Sometimes you might not even feel changed that day. But that might affect the person's worship next to you. They might be freed of something. Just as Paul and Silas did. You know, we praise God because He is good. We praise Him for what He has done. Um, Psalm 34 uh, says it beautifully. It starts off, and I'm going to start wrapping up here almost. Um, so it's at least another 40 minutes. Um, <laughs> Psalm 34, verse 1. I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak His praises. Uh, you guys know what the word all means? Yeah? Okay. So, oh, let me think. God, I'm going to praise you when I get the promotion. Yeah, God. God, I'm gonna, uh, am I going to praise you when my family member gets cancer? Maybe not got to realize we praise him for who he is for what he has done okay not what's happening it's not based on what's happening or what you see in front of you it's about who he is okay so that's why we say i love this and if you want make this something that you say this week god i'll praise you at all times maybe just start with that start with your family in your car ride back home or something like you don't need to lift your hands in the car please don't if you're the driver um Please don't. Stupid. Um, just start saying this. God, I will praise you at all times. Even if you don't believe it yet. Okay? Hear me? Even if you don't believe it yet, start saying it. Start saying it. There's power in the words that you say. Okay? Because once you say that, your spirit comes in line with God. God loves you. No matter who you are or what you've done. Okay? Every single person on earth. Okay? Not just the people in church. Not just the good people donating a lot of money to charities. Not just the people who tithe in church. Not the people who goes to church every weekend. God loves every single person on this earth as He loves His Son. Right? That's why we can praise Him at all times because He is good and He will always be. I'm rather going to put my praise towards someone like that than to put it in a sports team or a big band, a call, like Coldplay or whatever. Like, you go to Coldplay concerts, people are waving their hands. You know, me and Jason went to some metal shows. <laughs> metal music, yeah, I listened to that a little bit. Um, <laughs> he's like in the back, oh. Um, people go and they dance and they throw up their hands and stuff. Let's, like at a Coldplay or YouTube concert, whatever, you know. Coldplay's not going to be there for you when you're sick and... The hospital 
Coldplay's not going to be there for you when you go through a tough time. Okay? Our God is. Like, you're not going to go home, fall on your knees, and like, ah, and it was all yellow. Look at the stars. Look how they shine for. You know? It's not going to help you. It's really not. You're not going to fall on your knees for the basketball team. They're not going to come and visit you in the, in wherever you are when you're having a bad time or a good time. Don't put your faith in that, okay? And if we can lift our hands and praise those guys and praise the sports and praise the music, all of that, if we can lift our hands in those times, why can't we do it in church even or just at your house on your own? Amen? I'm, so, I'm sorry, like, if... I, I'm just being real with you guys. It's got to happen. It's got to happen. Something's got to happen. Something has to happen here in Ladner. Amen. In this city, in Vancouver, they need to see how we praise God. All right? It's huge. It's impactful. That's how the walls come crashing down. All right? Praise has to overcome your preference. By preference, I mean feeling. Okay? Always. Just keep that in your mind. Your praise... The way you look at God, the way you see God, the way God sees you has to overcome your feelings. That's when praise becomes real and powerful. Okay? And you might be new. You might, you might not know all these words and stuff that we do, uh, that we use in church, but there's a God who loves you very much. Okay? We talk about Him all the time. We believe in Him. Um... We hold on to who He is, not who we are. And, um, man, we can expect good things from God. Amen? Amen. I will wrap up with this one thing. Um, the, uh, we'll go to the next slide. This is good because, as I said, we sang this also earlier. This is why it's good. Okay? We sang it as a church earlier, whether you know it or not. We sang this. That um, God will always... Um, exceed your expectations okay that's the kind of god we serve that's the that's the type of god we has as a father all right he's that dad that buys his kids like 10 stuff for christmas and then the kid is like dad i can't take anymore you know and then the dad comes around the corner with the biggest one all right he always exceeds our expectations Way more than what we think or can even dream of, okay? And this is not just some feel-good preaching from our side or like a feel-good message about you like, ah, yeah, everything's going to be good. Our God will always bless you like more than what you know. No, this is word. This is scripture. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly and above all you could ever ask, imagine or think. Someone once told me, if your dreams don't scare you, you don't dream big enough. And since that day, I've been dreaming things that scare the crap out of me. <laughs> and guess what? God is going to even exceed that. He's going he's gonna to give it more, like, He's going to bless me way more than what I can imagine. I can trust you. I can imagine crazy things. I can imagine big things, man. Oh, but God is going to do so much more. So much more. And that is why I praise Him. For who He is, what He's done, and we'll always hold on to that. Amen? Man, this is good news. Seriously, I love it. This is really going to be a great year. Um, I'm looking forward to just be here with you guys this year. It's going to be really fun. Um, but we've got to share what we learn here outside okay worship songs worship was never meant to stay in church okay was meant or outside <laughs> this building these doors okay we cannot come here and only praise God here okay if you're like we're confined to our confessions like if we say that God is good that's going to be our way of life if you're going to praise God only in this building here, you're going to only expect good things to happen here. What about your household? What about your friendships? What about your family? You need to praise them amongst your you need to praise God amongst them. 
like when you're with them because God will show up and he'll do crazy things they never expected an earthquake I expect one not, not a real earthquake but I expect walls to be broken in people's life, in your guys' life. When I praise and worship, I expect that God will move and bless all of you. Because I know He's blessing me. I know how much He's blessing me. And He wants so much more for us. That's what makes me happy. That's why I can do it joyfully. That's why I can give joyfully. That's why I can just do whatever with the, with the knowing that God is with me. And God is good. Because He never fails never fails we sang a song that says he's faithful he's glorious he is jesus right that's powerful we as christians just the mention of the name of jesus <laughs> will break down walls just the mention of the name of jesus i've heard some pretty crazy stories about a woman who's been attacked and stuff where they just yell out the word the name jesus and the guys drop their knives and just fell to the floor she didn't pray. She didn't say help or stop or anything. Just, just yell out, Jesus! They sat. Didn't know what to do. Like, why? <laughs> What's happening? Why can't I pick up my knife? Praise is powerful. It'll be a problem for your problem. It'll turn your enemies to a full circle to love you. It'll make you love your enemies more. Those people. It'll make you love your family more. Start praising, start praising God. Praise God with your whole family. Do it as a family. It's really a powerful thing with your kids. Sit them, ask them, what are five things you love about Jesus? That's praising God. Why? Because we're talking about Him. All right? Anything to do with Him is pleasing to His ears. It's really good. I love you guys so much. Seriously, this is really good. I'm honored to be here and to speak this. Thank you guys for listening. And I believe that God had an amazing plan this morning. And I believe that you guys, um, well, I'm going to ask you, take this and please apply it outside these doors. We don't want to stand here and preach. We will, but we don't want to stand here and preach for the rest of our lives um, and have you guys not do anything. Okay? And us, like, we also, we don't just preach this. We live this. Okay? Thank you for trusting us in that. And um, man, we want to see you guys just love other people, love our community, because that we, we, <laughs> that'll bring change. That'll, be, that'll bring change into, into Ladner, to our community. And that's what we want. Transform the city. city will transform the world. Every knee will bow before God. It's a promise that's in the Word. It's right here. Every knee will bow, because He is good. We hold on to that. Amen. Can I pray for you guys? Yes. God, you are...